Hello and welcome. We are a group of AAPI artists who have come together to raise money for the fight against AAPI hate. In honor of AAPI Heritage Month, we are very excited to bring you this staged benefit reading of Lysistrata. We chose this production for several reasons. First, in a time when it has been challenging, painful, and scary to be AAPI, this play provides a chance for us to come together as members of the AAPI artistic community and tell a joyful, silly story that is still grounded in something real. It depicts universal human experiences, desires, and conflicts that are timeless. Originally produced in 411 BCE, its themes still resonate today. Secondly, this show gives us an opportunity to play the types of classic roles that are typically inaccessible to us. And finally, this play addresses roles of women surrounding sex and power. By putting AAPI women in these roles, we hope it provides a unique way of subverting the conventional narratives about sex, gender roles, and power dynamics. In the description below the video, we have provided donation links for three groups that support the AAPI community. Asian Americans Advancing Justice, Asian Law Caucus, Stop AAPI Hate, and Rise Justice Labs. We've included more information about these groups below as well as on our reading website, which is also linked in the description below. We wanted to highlight these issues that are happening to us today and to provide resources and ways to help all while giving you and ourselves and an opportunity to release, laugh, and have fun. Thank you for watching. Please sit back and enjoy Lysistrata by Aristophanes. Ah, if only they had been invited to a bucket reveling or a feast of Pan or Aphrodite or Genitalis, why the streets would have been impassable for the thronging tambourines. Now there's never a woman here. Ah, except my neighbor, Cleonike, whom I see approaching yonder. Good day, Cleonike. Good day, Lysistrata. But pray, why this dark foreboding face, my dear? Believe me, you don't look a bit pretty with those black lowering brows. Oh, Cleonike, my heart is on fire. I blush for our sex. Men will have it we are tricky and sly. And they are quite right, upon my word. Yet, look you, when the women are summoned to meet for a matter of the greatest importance, they lie in bed instead of coming. Oh, they will come, my dear. But it's not easy, you know, for women to leave the house. One is busy pottering about her husband, and another is getting a servant up. And a third is putting her child to sleep or washing the brat or feeding it. But I tell you, the business that calls them here is far and away more urgent. And why do you summon us, dear Lysistrata? What is it all about? About a big thing. And is it thick, too? Yes, very thick. And we are not all on the spot, imagine. Oh, if it were what you suppose, there would never be an absentee. No, no. It concerns a thing I have turned about and about this way and that so many sleepless nights. It must be something mighty fine and subtle for you have turned it about so. So fine, it means just this. Greece saved by women. By the women? Why, its salvation hangs on a poor thread then. Our country's fortunes depend on us. It is with us to undo utterly the Peloponnesians. That would be a noble deed, truly to exterminate the Boeotians to a man. But surely you would spare the Eves. For Athens' sake, I will never threaten so fell a doom. Trust me for that. However, if the Boeotian and Peloponnesian women join us, Greece is saved. How should women perform so wise and glorious an achievement? We women who dwell in the retirement of the household, clad in diaphanous garments of yellow silk and long flowing gowns, decked out with feathers and shod with dainty little slippers. Ah, but those are the very sheet anchors of our salvation. Those yellow tunics, those scents and slippers, those cosmetics and transparent robes. How so, pray? There is not a man will wield a lance against another. Quick, I will get me a yellow tunic for the dyers. Or want a shield. I'll run and put on a flowing gown. Or draw a sword. I'll hasten by a pair of slippers this instant. Now tell me, 
Would not the women have done best to come? Why they should have flown here? Ah, my dear, you'll see that like true Athenians, they will do everything too late. Why, there's not a woman come from the shore, not one from Salamis. But I know for certain they embarked at daybreak. And the dames from Acarne. Why, I thought they would have been the very first to arrive. The Agenes' wife, at any rate, is sure to come. Well, she has actually been to consult Hecate, but oh, look, here are some arrivals, and there are more behind. Ah, ha, now what country women may they be? They are from Anagyra. Yes, upon my word, tis a levy on mass of all the female population of Anagyra. Uh, are we late, Lysistrata? Uh, tell us, pray, what, not a word? I cannot say much for you, Myrony. You have not bestirred yourself over much for an affair of such urgency. I could not find my girdle in the dark. Uh, however, if the matter is so pressing, here we are. So speak. No, oh, let's wait a moment more till the women of Boeotia arrive and those from the Peloponnese. Yes, that is best. Ah, here comes Lampito. Good day, Lampito, dear friend from Lacedaemon. How well and handsome you look. What a rosy complexion. And how strong you seem. Why, you could strangle a bull, surely. Yes, indeed. I really think I could. It's because I do gymnastics and practice the bottom kick and dance. And what superb breasts. <laughs> La, you are feeling me as if I were a beast for sacrifice. And this young woman, where is she from? She is a noble lady from Boeotia. Ah, my pretty Boeotian friend, you are as blooming as a garden. But who has called together this council of women, pray? I have. Oh, well then, tell us what you want of us. Yes, please, tell us. What is the very important business you wish to inform us about? I will tell you, but first, answer me one question anything you wish. Don't you feel sad and sorry because of the fathers of your children are far away from you with the army? For I'll wager there is not one of you whose husband is not abroad at this moment. Mine has been the last five months in Thrace looking after you crazies. It's seven long months since mine left for Pylos. As for mine, if he ever does return from service, he's no sooner home than he takes down the shield again and flies back to the wars. And not so much as the shadow of a lover. Since the day the Milesians betrayed us, I have never se once seen an eight-inch gadget even to be a leathern consolation to us poor widows. Now, tell me, if I have discovered a means of ending the war, will you all second me? Well, yes. Verily, by all the goddesses, I swear I will. Though I have to put my gown and pawn and drink the money the same day. And so will I, though I must be split in two like a flat fish and have half myself removed. And I too, oh, why to secure peace, I would climb to the top of Mount Tegetus. Then I will out with it at last, my mighty secret. Oh, sister women, if we would compel our husbands to make peace, we must refrain. Refrain from what? Tell us, tell us. But will you do it? We will, we will, though we sh will, should die of it. We must refrain from the male altogether. Nay, why do you turn your backs on me? Where are you going? So you bite your lips and shake your heads, eh? Why these pale, sad looks? Why these tears? Come, will you do it, yes or no? Do you hesitate? I will not do it. Let the war go on. Nor will I let the war go on. And you say this, my pretty flatfish, who declared just now they might split you in two? Anything, anything but that. Bid me go through the fire, if you will, but to rob us of the sweetest thing in all the world, the Sestrata, darling. And you? Uh, yes. I agree with the others. I too would sooner go through fire. Oh, wanton, vicious sex. The poets have done well to make tragedies upon us. We are good for nothing then but love and lewdness. But you, my dear, you from hardy Sparta, if you join me, all may yet be well. Help me, second to me, I beg you. Tis a hard thing. 
by the two goddesses it is for a woman to sleep alone without ever a strong male in her bed but there peace must come first oh my darling my dearest best friend you are the only one deserving the name of woman which the gods forbid we do refrain altogether from what you say should we get peace any sooner of course we should by the goddesses twain we need only sit indoors with painted cheeks and meet our mates lightly clad in transparent gowns of amorgus silk and perfectly depilated they will get their tools up and be wild to lie with us that will be the time to refuse and they will hasten to make peace i am convinced of that yes just as menelaus when he saw helen's naked bosom threw away his sword they say but oh dear suppose our husbands go away and leave us then as fair Cratus says we must flay a skin dog that's all for ourselves no doubt we shall persuade our husbands to conclude a fair and honest peace but there is the athenian populace how are we to cure these folks of their warlike frenzy have no fear we undertake to make our own people listen to reason that's impossible so long as they have their trusty ships and vast treasures stored in the temple of athena ah but we have seen to that this very day the acropolis will be in our hands that is the task assigned to the older woman while we are here in council they are going under pretense of offering sacrifice to seize the citadel well said indeed everything is gone for the best come quick lampito and let us bind ourselves by an inviolable oath recite the terms we will swear to them with pleasure now what are you staring at pray lay this shield on the earth before us it's hollow upwards and someone bring me the victims inwards Sostratus, say what oath are we to swear what oath why in Aeschylus they sacrifice a sheep and swear over a buckler we will do the same oh the Sostrata, one cannot swear peace over a buckler surely what other oath do you prefer? Let's take a white horse and sacrifice it and swear on its entrails. But where shall we get a white horse? Well, what oath shall we take then? Listen to me. Let's set a great black bowl on the ground. Let's sacrifice a skin of Thasian wine into it and take oath not to add one single drop of water. Ah, that's a nose pleases me more than I can say. Let them bring me a bowl and a skin of wine. Oh, my dears, what a noble big bowl. What fun it will be to empty it. Set the bowl down on the ground and lay your hands on the victim. Almighty goddess, persuasion, and thou, bowl, boon, comrade of joy and merriment, receive this our sacrifice and be propitious to us poor women. Oh, the fine red blood. How well it flows. And what a delicious bouquet by Castor. Well, now, my dears, let me swear first, if you please. No, by Aphrodite, unless it's decided by lot. But come, then, Lampito, and all of you, put your hands to the bowl. And do you, Cleonike, repeat for all the rest the solemn terms I am going to recite. Then you must all swear and pledge yourselves by the same promises. I will have not to do whether with lover or husband. I will have not to do whether with lover or husband. Albeit he come to me with an erection. Albeit he come to me with an erection. Oh, this is Sada, I cannot bear it. I will live at home unbold. I will live at home unbold. Beautifully okay. dressed and wearing a saffron colored gown. Beautifully dressed and wearing a saffron colored gown. To the end, I may inspire my husband with the most ardent longings. To the end, I may inspire my husband with the most ardent longings. Never will I give myself voluntarily. Never will I give myself voluntarily. I will be cold as ice. I will be cold as ice. 
I will neither extend my Persian slippers toward the ceiling. I will neither extend my Persian slippers toward the ceiling. Nor will I crouch like the carven lions on a knife handle. Nor will I crouch like the carven lions on a knife handle. And if I keep my oath, may I be suffered to drink of this wine. And if I keep my oath, may I be suffered to drink of this wine. But if I break it, let my bowl be filled with water. But if I break it, let my bowl be filled with water. Will you all take this oath? We do. We do. Then I'll now consume this remnant. Well, enough. Enough, my dear. Now let's all drink and in turn cement our friendship. Listen. What do those cries mean? It's what I was telling you. The women have just occupied the Acropolis. So now, Lampedo, you return to Sparta to organize the plot while your comrades here remain as hostages. For ourselves, let us go and join the rest in the Citadel and let us push the bolts well home. But don't you think the men will all march up against us? Ha, <laughs> I laugh at them. Neither threats nor flame shall force our doors. They shall open only on the conditions I have named. Yes, yes, by Aphrodite. Otherwise we should be called cowardly and wretched women. Go easy, Drakis, go easy. Why, why your shoulders all chafed by these damned heavy olive stalks. Yeah, but forward, still forward, man, as needs must. The unlooked for things do happen to be sure in a long life. <sighs> Strimadorus, who would ever have thought it? Oh. Here we have the women who used for our misfortune to eat our bread and live in our houses. Daring nowadays to lay hands on the holy image of the goddess to seize the Acropolis and draw bars and bolts to keep any from entering. Come, Philurgus, man, let's hurry there. Let's lay our kindling all about the citadel and on the blazing pile burn with our hands these vile conspiratresses, one and all, and Lycon's wife first and foremost. Hey, my Demeter, never will I let them laugh at me as I have breath left in my body. <laughs> Cleomenes himself, the first who ever seized our citadel, had to quit it to his sore dishonor, spite his Lacedaemonian pride. He had to deliver me up his arms and slink off with a single garment to his back. My word, but he was filthy and ragged. And what an unkempt beard, to be sure. He had not a bath for six long years. Oh. But that was a mighty siege. Our men were ranged 17 deep before the gate and never left their posts even to sleep. These women, these enemies of Euripides and, and all the gods, shall I do nothing to hinder their inordinate insolence? Else let them tear down my trophies of Marathon? But look, to finish this toilsome climb, only this last steep bit is left to mount. Truly, it's no easy job without beats of burden and how these logs do bruise my shoulder still. Let us carry on and blow up on our fire so it does not go out just as we reach our destination. Oh dear, what a dreadful smoke. Uh, it bites my eyes like a mad dog. Let me in fire for sure or it would not devour my eyelids like this. <laughs> Come, Lachis, let's hurry. Let's bring succor to the goddess. It's now or never. Whew. Oh dear, what a confounded smoke. <laughs> oh, there now, there's our fire all bright and burning. Thank the gods. Now, why not first put down our loads here, uh, then take a vine branch, light it at the brazier and hurl it at the gate by way of a, a battering ram. If they don't answer our summons by pulling back the bolts, then when we set fire to the woodwork and the smoke will choke them. Ye gods, <laughs> what a <laughs> Is there never a, a Samian general will help me unload my burden? Ah, it shall not go, not gall my shoulder anymore. Come, Brazier, do your duty. Make the embers flare that I may kindle a brand. I want to be the first to hurl one. Aid me, heavenly victory. Let us punish for their insolent audacity the women who have seized our citadel. And may we raise a trophy of triumph for success. Oh, my dears, methinks I see fire and smoke. 
Can it be a conflagration? Let us hurry all we can. Fly, fly, Nicodice. Air, Kellett Key, and Critically perish in the fire, or are stifled in the smoke raised by these accursed old men and their pitiless laws. But great gods, can it be I came too late? Rising at dawn, I had the utmost trouble to fill this vessel at the fountain. Oh, what a crowd there was, and what a din! What a rattling in the water pots! Servants and slave girls pushed and thronged me. However, here I have it full at last, and I am running to carry the water to my fellow townswomen, whom our foes are plotting to burn alive. News has been brought us that a company of old, doddering graybeards loaded with enormous logs, as if they wanted to heat a furnace, have taken the field, vomiting dreadful threats, crying that they must reduce to ashes these horrible women. Suffer them not, O oh, goddess, but of thy grace, may I see Athens and Greece cured of their warlike folly. Tis to this end, O oh, thou guardian deity of our city, goddess of the golden crest, that they have seized that thy sanctuary. Be their friend and ally, Athena, and if any man hurl against them lighted firebrands, aid us to carry water to extinguish them. What is this I see, you wretched old men? Honest and pious folk, you cannot be who act so vilely. Aha, uh -huh. here's something new. A swarm of women stand posted outside to defend the gates. Fart at us, would you? We seem a mighty host, yet you do not see the 10,000th part of our sex. Oh, Phaedrius, shall we stop their cackle? Suppose one of us were to break a stick across their backs, eh? Let us set down our water pots on the ground to be out of the way, if they should dare offer us violence. Let someone knock out two or three teeth for them, as they did to Pupalus. They won't talk so loud then. Come on then, I wait you with unflinching foot, and no other bitch will grab your balls. Silence, or my stick will cut short your days. Now, just you dare touch Stratilus with the tip of your finger. And if I batter you to pieces with my fist, what will you do? I will tear out your lungs and entrails with my teeth. Oh, what a clever poet is Euripides. How well he says that woman is the most shameless of animals. Let's pick up us. Let's pick up our water jars again, Rodippy. You damned women. What do you mean to do here with, with your water? And you, old death in life, with your fire? Is it to cremate yourself? I am going to build you a pyre to roast your female friends upon. And I, I am going to put out your fire. You, you put out my fire, you. Yes, you, you shall soon see. I don't know what prevents me from roasting you with this torch. I am getting you a bath ready to clean off the filth. A bath for me, you dirty slut. Yes, indeed, a nuptial bath to heal. <laughs> Do you hear that? What insolence. I am a free woman, I tell you. I will make you hold your tongue, never fear. Ha-ha! <laughs> you shall never sit any more amongst the Heliists. Burn off her hair for her. Achilles, do your duty. Oh, God, dear. Oh, my. Oh, dear. <coughs> Was it hot? Hot, great gods, enough. Enough! I'm watering you to make you bloom afresh. <laughs> Alas, I, I, I'm too dry. Ah uh, me, how, how, how am I trembling with cold? These women, have they made din enough, I wonder, with their tambourines? We wept the dawnists upon their terraces, 
I was listening to the speeches last Sunday day and Demostratus, whom heaven confound, was saying we must all go over to Sicily and lo, his wife was dancing around, repeating, alas, alas, Adonis, woe is me for Adonis. Demostratus was saying we must levy hoplites at Zacchaeus, and there was his wife, more than half drunk, screaming on the house roof, weep, weep for Adonis. Well, that infamous mad hawk was belling away on his side. Do you not blush, you women, for your wild and uproarious doings? But, but you don't know all their effrontery yet. They abused and insulted us. They soused us with water in, in their water pots and have set us wringing our clothes for all the world as if we had pissed ourselves. And well done, too, by Poseidon. We men must share the blame for their ill conduct. It is we who teach them to love riot and dissoluteness and sow the seeds of wickedness in their hearts. You see a husband go into a shop. Look, you jeweler, he says. You remember the necklace you made for my wife? Well, the other evening when she was dancing, the catch came open. Now I am bound to start for Salamis. Will you make it convenient to go up tonight to make her fasten secure? Another will go to the cobbler, a great strong fellow with a great long tool and tell him the strap of one of my wife's sandals presses her little toe, which is extremely sensitive. Come in about midday to supple the thing and stretch it. Now see the result. Take my own case as a magistrate. I have enlisted rowers. I want money to pay them and the women slam the door in my face. But why do we stand here with arms crossed? Bring me a crowbar. I'll chastise her insolence. Hell oh, there, my fine fellow. What are you gaping at the crows for? Looking for a tavern, I suppose, eh? Come on, bring crowbars here and force open the gates. I will put a hand to the work myself. No need to force the gates. I am coming out. Here I am. And why bolts and bars? What we want here is not bolts and bars and locks, but common sense. Wait, my fine lady, where is my officer? I want him to tie that woman's hands behind her back. By Artemis, the virgin goddess, if he touches me with the tip of his finger, officer of the public peace though he be, let him look out for himself. How, how, how now, are, are you afraid? Seize her. I tell you, round the body. Two of you, at her, and have done with it. I tap Pandrosos. If you lay a hand on her, I'll trample you underfoot till the crap comes out of you. Look at the mess you've made. Where's the other officer? Bind that minx first, the one who speaks so presently. By Phoebe, if you touch her with one finger, you'd better call quick for a surgeon. What's that? Where's the officer? Lay hold of her. I'm going to stop your foolishness for you all. By Taric Artemis, if you go near her, I'll pull out your hair, scream as you like. Ah, the miserable man that I am. My own officers deserve me. What ho are we to let ourselves be bested by a mob of women? Ho, oh, Scythians, mine, close up your ranks and forward. By the holy goddesses, you'll have to make acquaintance with four companies of women ready for the fray and well-armed to boot. Forward, Scythians, and bind them. Forward, my gallant companions, march forth, ye vendors of grain and eggs, garlic and vegetables, keepers of tavern and bakeries, wrench and strike and tear. Come, a torrent of invective and insult. Enough, enough. Now retire, never rob the vanquished. How would be fortunate for my officers. Aha, uh -huh. so you thought you had only to do with a set of slave women. You did not know the ardor that fills the bosom of freeborn dames. Ardor, yes, by Apollo. Ardor enough, especially for the wine cup. Sir, sir, what good are words? They are of no avail with wild beasts of this sort. Don't you know how they have just washed us down and with no 
very fragrant soap. What would you have? You should have never laid rash hands on us. If you start afresh, I'll knock your eyes out. My delight is to stay at home as coy as a young maid without hurting anybody or moving any more than a milestone. But where the wasps if you go stirring up the wasp's nest? With what end in view have they seized the citadel of the Cranaus, the sacred shrine that is raised upon the inaccessible rock of the Acropolis? Question them. Be cautious and not too credulous. It, it, could, it would be culpable negligence not to pierce the mystery if we may. I would ask you first why you have barred our gates. To seize the treasury. No more money, no more war. Then money is the cause of the war? And of all our troubles, it was to find occasion to steal that Pisander and all the other agitators were forever raising revolutions. Well and good, but they'll never get another drachma here. What do you propose to do then, pray? You ask me that. Why? We propose to administer the treasury ourselves. <laughs> you do. What is there in that to surprise you? Do we not administer the budget of household expenses? But, but that is not the same thing. How so, not the same thing? It is the treasury supplies the expenses of the war. That's our first principle. No war. What? And the safety of the city? We will provide for that. You? Yes, we. How <laughs> what a sorry business. Yes, we're going to save you whether you like it or not. Oh, the impudence of the creatures. <laughs> you seem annoyed, but it has to be done nevertheless. No, but it's the very height of iniquity. We're going to save you, my good man. But if I don't want to be saved? <laughs> Why, all the more reason. But what a notion to concern yourselves with questions of peace and war. We will explain our idea. Out with it then, quick. Listen, and never a movement, please. Ooh, it is too much for me. I cannot keep my temper. Then look out for yourself. You have no more to fear than we have. Oh, stop your old croaking, you old crow. Now you, say what you have to say. Willingly. All the long time the war has lasted, we have endured in modest silence all you men did. You never allowed us to open our lips. We were far from satisfied, for we knew how things were going. Often in our own in our homes we would hear you discussing, upside down and inside out, some important turn of affairs. Then, with sad hearts but smiling lips, we would ask you, Well, in today's assembly did they vote peace? But mind your own business, the husband would growl, hold your tongue, please, and we would say no more. I would not have held my tongue, though, not I. You would have been reduced to silence by blows then. Well, for my part, I would say no more. But presently, I would come to know you had arrived at some fresh decision more fatally foolish than ever. Ah, my dear man, I would say, what madness next? But he would only look at me askance and say, just weave your web, please, else your cheeks will smart for hours. War is men's business. Bravo, well said indeed. How now, wretched man, not to let us contend against your follies was bad enough. But presently we heard you asking out loud in the open street, is there never a man left in Athens? And no, not one, not one, you were assured in reply. Then, then we made up our minds without more delay to make common sense, to make common cause to save Greece. Open your ears to our wise counsels and hold your tongues and we may put things on a better footing. Oh, you put things indeed. Oh, this is too much. The insolence of the creatures. Be still. Me, may I die a thousand deaths ere I obey one who wears a veil? Oh, if that's all that troubles you, here, take my veil. Wrap uh, it round no. your head and hold your tongue. Uh, uh, then take this basket and put on a girdle, card, wool, munch beans. Uh, the war shall be women's business. 
lay aside your water pots. We will guard them. We will help our friends and companions. For myself, I will never weary of the dance. My knees will never grow stiff with fatigue. I will brave everything with my dear allies on whom nature has lavished virtue, grace, boldness, cleverness, and whose wisely directed energy is going to save the state. Oh, my good gallant Lysistrata and all my friends, be ever like a bundle of nettles. Never let your anger slacken. The winds of fortune blow our way. May gentle love and the sweet Cyprian queen shower seductive charms on our breasts and our thighs. If only we may stir so amorous a feeling among the men that they stand as firm as sticks, we shall indeed deserve the name of peacemakers among the Greeks. How will that be, pray? To begin with, we shall not see you any more running like mad fellows to the market holding lance in fist. That will be something gained anyway. By the Paphian gods, it will. Now we see them mixed up with saucepans and kitchen stuff, armed to the teeth, looking like wild corybantes. Why, of course, that's what brave men should do. Oh, but what a funny sight to behold a man wearing a gorgon's bead buckler coming along to buy fish. The other day in the market, I saw Phylar with flowing rings. He was on horseback and was pouring into his helmet the broth he had just bought from an old dame still. There was a Thracian warrior here too was brandishing his lance like Tyrius in the play. He had scared a good woman selling figs into a perfect panic and was gobbling up all the ripest fruit. And how, pray, would you propose to restore peace and order in all the countries of Greece? It's the easiest thing in the world. Come, tell us how, I am curious to know. When we are winding our thread and it is tangled, we pass the spool across and through the skine, now this way, now that way, even so. To finish up the war, we shall send embassies hither and thither and everywhere to disentangle manners, matters. And it is with your yarn and your skine and your spool you think to appease so many bitter enmities, you silly women. If only you had common sense, you would always do in politics the same as we do with our yarn. Um, how is that, eh? First, we wash the yarn to separate the grease and the filth. Do the same with all bad citizens. Sort them out and drive them forth with rods. They're the refuse of the city. Then for all such as come crowding up in search of employment and offices, we must card them thoroughly. Then to bring them all to the same standard, pitch them pell-mell into the same basket. Resident aliens or no, allies, debtors to the state, all mixed up together. Then, as for our colonies, you must think of them as so many isolated hanks. Fr find the ends of the separate threads, draw them to a center here, wind them into one, make one great hank of the lot out of which the public can weave itself a good stout tunic. Is it not a sin and a shame to see them carving and winding the state, these women who have neither art nor part in the burdens of the war? What? Wretched man! Why, it's a far heavier burden to us than to you. In the first place, we bear sons who go off to fight far away from Athens. Oh, enough said! Do not recall that sorry memory. Then secondly, instead of enjoying the pleasures of love and making the best of our youth and beauty, we are left to languish far from our husbands who are all with the army. But say no more of ourselves. What afflicts me is to see our girls growing old in lonely grief. Don't the mandal grow old too? That is not the same thing. When the soldier returns from the wars, even though he has white hair, he very soon finds a young wife. But a woman has only one summer. If she does not make hay while the sun shines, no one will afterwards have anything to say to her, and she spends her days consulting oracles that never send her a husband. But the old man who can still get an erection. But you, why don't you get done with it and die? You're rich, go buy yourself a beer and I will need you a honey cake for Cerberus. Here, take this garland. Oh, no, oh, oh. And this one too. Oh. And these fillets. <sighs> What else 
else do you need? Step aboard the boat. Karan is waiting for you. You're keeping him from pushing off. Bring me some family. What an insult. I will go show myself to my fellow magistrate just as I am. What? Are you blaming us for not having exposed you according to custom? Nay. Console yourself. We will not fail to offer up the third day sacrifice for you first thing in the morning. Awake. Friends of freedom, let us hold ourselves eye ready to act. I suspect a mighty peril. I foresee another tyranny like Hippias. I'm so afraid the Laconians assembled here with Clisthenes have, by a stratagem of war, stirred up these women, enemies of the gods, to seize up our treasury and the funds whereby I lived. It is not a sin and a shame for them to interfere in advising the citizens to prate of shields and lances and to ally themselves with Laconians. Fellows, I trust no more than I would so many famished wolves. The whole thing, my friends, is nothing else but an attempt to reestablish tyranny. But I will never submit. I will be on my guard for the future. I will always carry a blade hidden, uh, hidden under my myrtle bows. I will post myself in the public square under arms, shoulder to shoulder with Aristogiton. And now to make a start, I must just break a few of that cursed old jade's teeth yonder. Nay, never play the brave man. Else when you go back home, your own mother won't know you. But dear friends and allies, first let us lay our burdens down. Then citizens all, Hear what I have to say. I have useful counsel to give our city, which deserves it well at my hands, for the brilliant distinctions it has lavished on my girlhood. At seven years of age, I carried the sacred vessels. At 10, I pounded barley for the altar of Athena. Next, clad in a robe of yellow silk, I played the bear to Artibus at the Baroness. Uh, about presently, when I was grown up, a tall, handsome maiden, they put a necklace of dried figs around my neck, and I was one of the canophori. So surely I am bound to give my best advice to Athens. What matters that I was born a woman, if I can cure your misfortunes? I pay my share of tolls and taxes by giving men to the state. But you, you miserable graybeards, you contribute nothing to the public charges. On the contrary, you have wasted the treasure of our forefathers, as it was called, the treasure amassed in the days of the Persian Wars. You pay nothing at all in return, and into the bargain you endanger our lives and liberties by your mistakes. Have you one word to say for yourselves? <laughs> ah. Don't irritate me, you there, or I'll lay my slipper across your jaws, and it's pretty heavy. Outrage upon outrage. Things are just going from bad to worse. Let's punish the minxes, every one of us that has balls to boast of. Come off with our tunics, for a man must savor of manhood. Come, my friends, let us strip naked from head to foot. Courage, I say, we who in our day garrison Lipsidrian, let us be young again and shake off Eld. If we give them the least hold over us, that's the end. Their audacity will know no bounds. We shall see them building ships and fighting sea fights like Artemisia. And if they want to mount and ride as cavalry, we had best cashier the knights for indeed women excel in riding and have a fine firm seat for the gallop. Just think of all those squadrons of Amazon's, My Amazon's Mycon has painted for us, engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat with men. Come then, we must now fit collars to all these willing necks. By the blessed goddesses, if you anger me, I will let loose beast of my evil passions, and a very hailstorm of blows will set you yelling for help. Come, dames, off with your tunics, and quicks the word, women must smell the smell of women in the throes of passion. Now, just you dare to measure strength with me, old graybeard, and I warrant you, you'll never eat garlic or black beans anymore. No, not a word. 
My anger is at a boiling point, and I'll do with you what the beetle did with the eagle's egg. I laugh at your threats. So long as I have on my side Lampito here and the nobles even, my dear is mania. Pass decree on decree. You can do us no hurt, you wretched abhorred of all your fellows. Why, only yesterday, on occasion of the feast of Hecate, I asked my neighbors of Boeotia for one of their daughters, for whom my girls have a lively liking. A fine fat eel to wit. And if they did not refuse, all along of your silly decrees, we shall never cease to suffer the like till someone gives you a neat trip up and breaks your neck for you. You, Lysistrata, you who are leader of our glorious enterprise, why do I see you coming towards me with so gloomy an air? It's the behavior of these naughty women. It's the female heart and female weakness that so discourage me. Tell us, tell us, what is it? I only tell the simple truth. What has happened so disconcerting? Come, tell your friends. Oh, the thing is so hard to tell, yet so impossible to conceal. Never seek to hide any ill that has befallen our cause. To blurt it out in a word, we want laying. Oh, Zeus. Oh, Zeus. What use calling upon Zeus? The thing is, even as I say, I cannot stop them any longer from lusting after the men. They are all for deserting. The first I caught was slipping out by the postern gate near the cave of Pan. Another was letting herself down by a rope and pulley. A third was busy preparing her escape, while a fourth, perched on a bird's back, was just taking wing for Orsilochus's house when I seized her by the hair. One and all, they are inventing excuses to be off home. Look, there goes one, trying to get out. Hello there, whither away so fast? I want to go home. I have some Malaysian wool in the house, which is getting all eaten up by worms. Bah, you and your worms, go back, I say. I will return immediately, I swear. I, I will buy two goddesses. I only have to just spread it out on the bed. You shall not do anything of the kind. I say, you shall not go. Must I leave my wool to spoil then? Yes, if need be. Unhappy woman that I am. Alas for my flax, I've left it at home unstripped. So here's another trying to escape to go home and strip her flax. Oh. I swear by the goddess of light, the instant I have put it in condition, I will come straight back. You shall do nothing of the kind. If once you began, others would want to follow suit. Oh, goddess divine, Elithia, patroness of women in labor, stay, stay the birth till I have reached a spot less hallowed than Athena's mount. What mean you by these silly tales? I am going to have a child now, this minute. But you were not pregnant yesterday. Well, I am today. Oh, let me go in search of the midwife, Lysistrata. Quick, quick. What is this fable you are telling me? Ah, what have you got there so hard? A male child. No, no, by Aphrodite, nothing of the sort. Why, it feels like something hollow, a pot or a kettle. Oh, you silly creature, if you have not got the sacred helmet of Pallas and you said you were with child. And so I am, by Zeus, I am. Then why this helmet, pray? For fear my pains should cease in the Acropolis, I mean, uh, to lay my eggs in this helmet, as the doves do. Excuses and pretenses, every word. The thing's as clear as daylight. Anyway, you must stay here now till the fifth day, your day of purification. I cannot sleep any more in the Acropolis. Now I have seen the snake that guards the temple. Ah, and those awful owls with their dismal hooting. I cannot get a wink of rest, and I'm just... Dying of fatigue. You wicked women have done with your falsehoods. You want your husbands, that's plain enough. 
but don't you think they want you just as badly? They are spending dreadful nights. Oh, I know that well enough. But hold out, my dears, hold out a little more patience, and the victory will be ours. An oracle promises us success if only we remain united. Shall I repeat the words? Yes, tell us what the oracle declares. Silence, then. Now, when is the swallows, fleeing before the hoopoos, shall have all flocked together in one place and shall refrain from them from all amorous commerce, then will be the end of all the ills of life. Yea, and Zeus, who doth thunder in the skies, shall set above what was erst below. What, uh, shall the men be underneath? But if dissension do arise among the swallows and they take wing from the holy temple, it will be said there is never a more wanton bird in all the world. Ye gods, the prophecy is clear. Nay, never let us be cast down by calamity. Let us be brave to bear and go back to our posts. It would be shameful indeed not to trust the promises of the Oracle. I want to tell you a fable they used to relate to me when I was a little boy. This is it. Once upon a time, there was a young man called Melanion who hated the thought of marriage so sorely that he fled away to the wilds. So he dwelt in the mountains wove himself nets and caught hares. He never, never came back. He had such a horror of women, as chaste as Melenian. We loathe the shade, the jades. As chaste as Melenian, we loathe the jades just as much as he did. You, dear old woman, I would fain to kiss you. I will set you crying without onions. I give you a sound kicking. Aha! What a dense forest you have there. Oh, so was Moronides, one of the bushiest of men of this side. His backside was all black, and he terrified his enemies as much as Formio. I want to tell you a fable, too, to match yours about Malenian. Once there was a certain man called Timon, a tough customer and a whimsical a true son of the Furies, with a face that seemed to glare out of the thorn bush. He withdrew from the world because he couldn't abide bad men, after vomiting a thousand curses at them. He had a holy horror of ill-conditioned fellows, but he was mighty tender towards women. Suppose I up and broke your jaw for you. I'm not a bit afraid of you. Suppose I let fly a good kick at you. I should see your thing then. You would see that for all my age. It is very well plucked. Oh there, come quick, come quick. What? What is it? Why these cries? A, a man, a man. I see him approaching all afire with the flames of love. Oh, divine queen of Cyprus, Paphos, and Kythera, I pray you still be propitious to our enterprise. Where is he, this unknown foe? Over there, beside the temple of Demeter. Yes, indeed, I see him. But who is he? Look, look, do any of you recognize him? I do, I, I do, it's my husband, Kinesius. To work then, be it your task to inflame and torture and torment him. Seductions, caresses, provocations, refusals, try every means, grant every favor, always accepting what is forbidden by our oath on the wine bowl. Have no fear, I'll do it. Well, I shall stay here to help you cajole the man and set his passions aflame. The rest of you, withdraw. Alas, alas, how I am tortured by spasm and rigid convulsion. Oh, I am racked on the wheel. Who is this that dares to pass our lines? It is I. What, a man? Very much so. Get out. But who are you that repulses me? The sentinel of the day. For the God's sake, call Marini. Call Marini, you say? And who are you? I am her husband, Kinesius, son of Paeon. Ah, 
day, my dear friend. Your name is not unknown amongst us. Your wife has it forever on her lips, and she never touches an egg or an apple without saying, this is for Kinesius. Really and truly? Yes, indeed, by Aphrodite. And if we fall to talking of men, quick, your wife declares, oh, all the rest, they're good for nothing compared with Kinesius. Oh, please, please go and call her to me. And uh, what will you give me for my trouble? Anything I've got, if you like. I'll give you what I have here. Well, well, I will tell her to come. Quick, oh, be quick. Oh, life has no more charms for me since she left my house. I am sad, sad when I go indoors. It all seems so empty. My victuals have lost their savor. And all because of this erection I can't get rid of. I love him, oh, I love him. But he won't let himself be loved. No, I shall not come. Marini, my little darling Marini, what are you saying? Come down to me, quick. Uh, no, indeed, not I. I call you Marini. Marini, won't you please come? Why should you call me? You do not want me. Not want you? Here I stand, stiff with desire. Goodbye. Oh, Marini, Marini, in our child's name, hear me. At any rate, hear the child. Little lad, call your mother. Mama, 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 there. Listen, don't you pity the poor child? It's six days now. You've never washed and never fed the child. Poor darling, your father takes mighty little care of you. Come down, dearest, come down for the child's sake. Oh, what a thing it is to be a mother. Well, well, we must come down, I suppose. Why, how much younger and prettier she looks, and how she looks at me so lovingly. Her cruelty and scorn only redouble my passion. You are as sweet as your father is provoking. Let me kiss you, my treasure, mother's darling. Oh. What a bad thing it is to let yourself be led away by other women. Why give me such pain and suffering and you yourself into the bargain? Hands off, sir. Everything is going to rack and ruin in the house. I don't care. But your web, it's being all pecked to pieces by the cocks and hens. Don't you care for that? Precious little. And Aphrodite, whose mysteries you have not celebrated for so long, Oh, won't you please come back home? No, at least not till a sound treaty puts an end to the war. Well, if you wish it so much, why, we'll make it your treaty. <laughs> well and good. When that's done, I'll come home. Till then, I am bound by an oath. A at any rate, lie with me for a little while. No, 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 no. But just the same. I can't say that I don't love you. You love me? Then why refuse to lie with me, my little girl, my sweet Marini? You must be joking. What? Before the child? <laughs> Manus, carry the lad home. There, you see? The child is gone. There's nothing to hinder us. Won't you lie down now? But, miserable man, where? Where? In the cave, in the cave of Pan. Nothing could be better. But how shall I purify myself before going back into the citadel? Nothing easier. You can wash at the Klepsedra. But my oath, do you want me to perjure myself? I'll take all responsibility, don't worry. Well, I'll be off then and find a bed for us. There's no point in that. Surely we can lie on the ground. No, no, even though you are bad, uh, I don't like your lying on the bare earth. Uh. How the dear girl loves me. Come, go to bed quick. I'm going to undress. Oh, but dear, we must get a mattress. A mattress? Oh, no, never mind about that. Uh, no, by Artemis. Lie on the bare sacking? Never. That would be squalid. Kiss me. Wait a minute. <sighs> Good God, hurry up. Here is a mattress. 
Lie down. <laughs> I'm just going to undress. Uh, but you, no pillow. I don't want one either. Uh, but I do. Oh God, oh God, she treats my tool just like Heracles. There, lift your head, dear. Is that all I wonder? Surely there's nothing else. Come, my treasure. I'm just unfastening my girdle. Uh, but remember what you promised me about making peace. Uh, mind you keep your word. Yes, yes, upon my life, I will. Why, you have no blanket. My God, what difference does that make? What I want is to make love. Never fear, directly, directly. I'll be back in no time. <sighs> The woman will kill me with her blankets. Now, get yourself up. I've got this up. Wouldn't you like me to send to you? No, my Apollo, no, please don't. Yes, by Aphrodite, but I will, whether you like it or not. God, I wish you'd hurry up and get through with all this. Hold out your hand. Now, rub it in. Oh, and Apollo's name. I don't much like the smell of it, but perhaps it will improve when it's well rubbed in. Uh, it does not somehow smack of the marriage bed. Oh, dear, what a scatterbrain I am. I, if I hadn't gone and bought Rhodian perfumes. Never mind, dearest, let it go now. You don't really mean that. Damn the man who invented perfumes. Here, take this bottle. I have a better one already for you, darling. Come on, you provoking creature, to bed with you, and don't bring another thing. <laughs> coming, coming. I'm just slipping off my shoes. Dear boy, will you vote for peace? I'll think about it. Ah, oh, I'm a dead man. She is killing me. She is gone and left me in torment. I must have someone to lay, I must. Ah, me, the loveliest woman has choused and cheated me. Poor little lad, how am I gonna give you what you want so badly? Where is Kinalopex? Quick, men, get him a nurse, do. Poor miserable wretch, bought in your amorousness. What tortures are yours? Are you fill me with pity? Could any man's back and loin stand such a strain? He stands stiff and rigid and there's never a wench to help him. Ye gods in heaven, what pains I suffer. Well, there it is. It's her doing that abandoned hussy. No, no, rather say the sweetest, dearest darling. <laughs> that Dearest darling? No, no, that hussy, say I. Zeus, thou god of the skies, canst not let loose a hurricane to sweep them up into the air and whirl them around, then drop them down, crash, and impale them on the point of this man's tool. Say, where shall I find the Senate and the Pritons? I'm a bearer of dispatches. Are you a man or a priapic? <laughs> Don't be stupid. I am a herald, of course. I swear I am, and I come from Sparta about making peace. Uh, but look, you are hiding a lance under your clothes, surely? No, nothing of the sort. Th then why do you turn away like that and hold your cloak out from your body? Have you got uh, swellings in the groin from your journey? <laughs> the twin brethren, the man's an old maniac. But you've got an erection. You lewd fellow. I tell you no, but enough of this foolery. Well, what is it you have there then? A Lacadamian sky tail. Oh, indeed, a sky tail is it? Well, well, speak out frankly. I know all about these matters. How are things going at Sparta now? Why, everything is turned upside down in Sparta. Now the allies have erections. We simply must have Pelony. What is the reason of it all? Is it God Pan's doing? No, it's all the work of Lampito and the women who are acting at her instigation. They've kicked the men out from between their thighs. 
What, what are you doing about it? We are at our wit's end. We walk bent double just as if we were carrying lanterns in a wind. The jades have sworn we shall not so much as touch them till we have all agreed to conclude peace. Ah, I see now. It's a general conspiracy embracing all Greece. Go back to Sparta and bid them send envoys plenipotentiary to treat for peace. I will urge our senators myself to name plenipotentiaries from us and to persuade them. Why, I will show them my own tool. What could be better? I fly at your command. No wild beast is there, no flame of fire more fierce and untamable than woman. The leopard is less savage and shameless. And yet you dare to make war upon me, wretch, when you might have me for your most faithful friend and ally. Never, never can my hatred cease towards women. Well, suit yourself. Still, I cannot bear to leave you all naked as you are. Folks would laugh at you. Come, I'm going to put this tunic on you. You are right, upon my word. It was only in my confounded fit of rage that I took it off. Now, at any rate, you look like a man, and they won't make fun of you. Ha! If you had not offended me so badly, I would take out that nasty insect you have in your eye for you. Oh, that's, so that's what was annoying me. So, so look, here's, here's a ring. Just remove the insect and show it to me. By Zeus! It has been hurting my eye for a long time now. Well, I agree, though your manners are not over and above pleasant. Oh, what a huge, great gnat! Just look! It's from Chakorathus, for sure! Oh, a thousand thanks. The creature was digging a regular well in my eye. Now that it's gone, my, my tears can flow freely. I will wipe them for you, bad, naughty man though you are. Now, just one kiss. A kiss? Certainly not. Just one, whether you like it or not. Oh, <laughs> those confounded women, how they do cajole us. How true the saying, it is impossible to live with the baggage is impossible to live without them. Come, let us agree for the future not to regard each other anymore as enemies, and to clinch the bargain, let us sing a choric song. We desire Athenians to speak ill of no man, but on the contrary, to say much good of everyone, and to do the like. We have had enough of misfortunes and calamities. If there is any man or woman who wants a bit of money, two or three minnows or so, well, our purse is full. If only peace is concluded, the borrower will not have to pay it back. Also, I'm inviting to supper a few Caristian friends who are excellently well qualified. I have still a drop of good soup left and a young porker I'm going to kill and the flesh will be sweet and tender. I shall expect you at my house today, but first, Away to the baths with you, you and your children. Then come all of you. Ask no one's leave, but walk straight up as if you were at home. Never fear, the door will be shut in your faces. Uh, here comes the, the envoys from Sparta with their long flowing beards. Why, you think they wore pigstyles between their thighs. Hail to you first all, Laconians. Tell us how you are, you fare. No need for many words. You can see what a state we're in. Alas, the situation grows more and more strained. The intensity of the thing is simply frightful. Mm, it's beyond belief. But to work, summon your commissioners and let us patch up the best peace we may. Ah, our men too, like wrestlers in the arena, cannot endure a rag over their bellies. It's an athlete's malady, which only exercise can remedy. Oh, can anybody tell us where Lysistrata is? Surely she will have some compassion on our Look. condition. Uh, now, he has the very same complaint. 
Don't you feel a strong n- nervous tension in the morning? Yes, and a dreadful, dreadful torture it is. Unless peace is made very soon, we will shall find no recourse but to make love to the Klesteni. Take my advice and arrange her clothes as best you can. One of the fellows who mutilated the Hermae Herme may see you. Right by you. Quite right. By the Dioscori. There. I'll put on my tunic. Oh, what a terrible state we are in. Greetings to you, Laconian fellow sufferers. Ah, my boy. What a terrible thing it would have been if these fellows had seen us just now when we were on full stand. Uh, Speak out, Laconians. What is it that brings you here? We have come to treat for peace. Well said. We are for the same mind. Better call it Estrada, then. She is the only person who will bring us to terms. Yes, yes, and Lysistratus into the bargain, if you will. Oh, needless to call her, she has heard your voices. And here she comes. Hail, boldest and bravest of womankind. The time has come to show yourself and turn uncompromising and conciliatory, exacting and yielding, haughty and condescending. Call up all your skill and artfulness. Lo, the foremost men in Hellas, seduced by your fascinations, are agreed to entrust you with the task of ending their quarrels. It will be an easy task, if only they refrain from mutual indulgence and masculine love. If they do, I shall know the fact at once. Now, where is the gentle goddess Peace? Lead hither the Laconian envoys. But look, you, no roughness or violence, our husbands always behaved so boorishly. Bring them to me with smiles as women should. If any refuse to give you his hand, then take hold of his tool. Bring up the Athenians too. You may lead them either way. Laconians, approach. And you, Athenians, on my other side. Now, hearken all. I am but a woman, but I have good common sense. Nature has endowed me with discriminating judgment, which I have yet to further developed, thanks to the wise teachings of my father and the elders of the city. First, I must bring a reproach against you that applies equally to both sides. At Olympia and Thermopylae and Delphi and a score of other places too numerous to mention, you celebrate before the same altars ceremonies common to all Hellenes Yet you go cutting each other's throats and sacking Hellenic cities when all the while the barbarian yonder is threatening you. That is my first point. Good God, this erection is killing me. Now it is to you I address you myself, Laconians. Have you forgotten how Pericletus, your own countryman, sat a suppliant before our altars? How pale he was in his purple robes, He had come to crave an army of us. It was the time when when Messenia was pressing you sore and the sea god was shaking the earth. Cimon marched to your aid at the head of 4,000 hoplites and saved Lacedaemon. And after such a service as that, you ravaged the soil of your benefactors. They do wrong, very wrong, Lysistrata. We do wrong, very wrong. Oh, great gods, what a lovely bottom peace has. And now, a word to the Athenians. Have you no memory left of how in the days when you wore the tunic of slaves, the Laconians came, spear in hand, and slew a host of Thessalians and partisans of Hippias the tyrant? They and only they fought on your side on that eventful day. They delivered you from despotism, and thanks to them, our nation could change the short tunic of the slave for the long cloak of the free man. I've never seen a woman of more gracious dignity. I have never seen a woman with a finer body. Bound by such ties of mutual kindness, how can you bear to be at war? Stop! Stay the hateful strife. Be reconciled. What hinders you? We're quite ready. If they will give us back our rampart. What rampart, my dear man? Pylos, which you've been asking for and craving for ever so long. 
In the sea god's name, you shall never have it. Agree, my friends, agree. But then what city shall we be able to stir up trouble in? Ask for another place in exchange. Ah, take it. Oh, well, to begin with, give us Echinus, the, the Malik Gulf adjoining, and the two legs of Megara. No, either do your story, surely not at all that, my dear sir. Come to terms. Never make a difficulty of two legs more or less. Well, I'm ready to strip down and get to work right now. And I also did not get to, to start with. That's just what you shall do once peace, once peace is signed. So if you really want to make it, go consult your allies about the matter. What allies? I should like to know. Why, we are all erected. There's no one who is not mad to be mating. What we all want is to be in bed with our wives. How should our allies fail to second our project? And ours too, for certain sure. The Christians first and foremost by the gods. Well said, indeed. Now go and purify yourselves for entering their Acropolis, where the women invite you to supper. We will empty our provision baskets to do you honor. At table, you will exchange oaths and pledges. Then each man will go home with his wife. Embroidered stuffs and dainty tunics and flowing gowns and golden ornaments. Everything I have, I offer them to you with all my heart. Take them all for your children, for your girls, in case they are chosen Canephori. I invite you, everyone, to enter. Come in and choose whatever you will. There is nothing so well fastened you cannot break the seals and carry away the contents. Look about you everywhere. You won't find a blessed thing unless you have sharper eyes than mine. And if any of you lacks corn to feed his slaves and his young and numerous family, why, I have a few grains of wheat at home. Let him take what I have to give, a big 12 pound loaf included. So let my poor neighbors all come with bags and wallets. My man, Manus, shall give them corn. But I warn them not to come near my door. But beware the dog. To come along then, and as quick as may be. Lead on, I'm your man. Quick, quick's the word I say. I, 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 I say you open the door. Uh, go your way, I tell you. Why, bless me, they're all sitting down now. I shall have to singe him with my torch to make him stir. What impudence! I won't, I won't take this. Oh, well, if it's absolutely necessary, just to please you, we'll have to take the trouble. I'll share with you. No, 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 no. You must be off or I'll tear your hair out. I will be off. I say, and don't annoy the Lanconian envoys. They're just coming out from the banquet ball. Oh, such a merry banquet I've never seen before. Laconians were simply charming. Oh, after a drink is in, we're all wise men, every one of us. <laughs> it's only natural to be sure for sober, we're all fools. Take my advice, my fellow countrymen. Our envoys should always be drunk. We go to Sparta, we enter the city sober. Why, we must be picking a quarrel directly. We don't understand what they say to us. We imagine a lot, they don't say it all. And we report home all wrong, all topsy urby. But look you, today, it's quite different. We're enchanted, whatever happens. Instead of Clitagora, they might sing us Telamon and we should clap our hands just the same. A perjury of two in, in the bargain, why? What does that matter to merry companions in their cups? Ah, oh, but here they are back again. Oh, will you be gone, my, you loafing scoundrel? Aha, there's the company coming out already. Oh, my dear sweet friend, come, take your flute in hand. I would fain dance and sing my best in honor of the Athenians and our noble selves. Yes. 
Take your flute in the gods' name. Oh, what a delight to see him dance. Oh, Nemesine, inspire these men. Inspire my muse who knows our exploits and those of the Athenians. With what a godlike ardor did they swoop down at Artemisium on the ships of the Medes. What a glorious victory was that. For the soldiers of Leonidas, they were like fierce boars wetting their tusks. The sweat ran down their faces and drenched all their limbs, for verily the Persians were as many as the sands of the seashore. O oh, Artemis, huntress queen, whose arrows pierce the denizens of the woods, virgin goddess, be thou favorable to the peace we here conclude. Through thee may our hearts be long united. May this treaty draw close forever our bonds of a happy friendship. No more wiles and stratagems Aid us, oh, aid us, maiden huntress. All is for the best. And now, Laconians, take your wives away home with you. And you, Athenians, yours. May husband live happily with wife and wife with husband. Dance, dance to celebrate our bliss. And let us be heedful to avoid like mistakes for the future. Appear, appear, dancers, and the graces with you. Let us invoke one and all Artemis and her heavenly brother, gracious Apollo, patron of the dance, and Dionysus, whose eye darts flame as he steps forward, surrounded by the Maenad maids, and Zeus, who wields the flashing lightning, and his august thrice blessed spouse, the queen of heaven. These let us invoke, and all the other gods, calling all the inhabitants of the skies to witness the noble peace now concluded under the found auspices of Aphrodite. Yo, pain! Yo, pain, dance, leap as an honor of victory won. Joy, joy, yay, yay! And you, our Laconian guests, sing us a new and inspiring strain. Leave once more, oh, leave once more the noble height of Tegetus. Oh, muse of Lacedaemon, and join us in singing the praises of Apollo of Amicle and Athena of the Brazen House and the gallant twin sons of Tyndareus who practiced arms on the banks of the Eurotus River. Haste, haste, hither, with nimble-footed pace, let us sing, Sparta, the city that delights in choruses, divinely sweet and graceful dances, when our maidens bound lightly by the river's side like frolics from Philly, beating the ground with rapid steps and shaking their long locks in the wind as the Bacantes wave their wands in the wild revels of the wine god. At their head, oh, chaste and beauteous goddess, daughter of Leto Artemis, shalt thou lead the song and dance with the fillet, binding thy waving tresses, appear in thy loveliness, leap like a fawn, strike thy divine hands together to animate the dance and aid us to renown the valiant goddess of battle. Great Athena of the Brazen House.